What's up everyone, Cyan Keys here. Checking out the Type 75 by Ipomaker today. This board obviously has a 75% layout with exploded arrow keys. Starting at $120, getting the blue or black colorway, which is the one I'm having, costs an additional $20, leaving it to be $140. Within the same family, the Type series has the Type 65 as well in case you prefer a smaller layout. Preview board, tri mode with an overall aluminum build, gold chamfer around the edge of the casing, rotary knob at the top right corner, and mirror PVD back piece that improves the overall aesthetic. Love it or hate it, the keycaps are side printed. Me personally am not a big fan of the keycaps. It is OEM profile with shine through legends on the side. Very thin material and there are no additional keycaps to cater for Mac users. I swapped with thicker PVD keycaps. Very very small difference in acoustics by the way. It seems like the whole intention of this board is to target audience that is inside the gaming industry and in terms of VIA compatibility, yes, they do support it. In terms of switches, what I have here is the Ipomaker Lemon Switch featuring PA66 housing and palm stem with 40 grams actuation force. I find them embrace more towards a clacky sound profile. Anyway, let's just see how it goes for now. Checking out the stabilizers, they are plate mounted and got to be very frank with you. It is not great on the spacebar, really recommend to swap them if you have the time. After disassembling the board, the PCB appears to be hot swappable with south facing RGB. I do see flex cuts on the PCB which appears on the FR4 plate as well. Anyways, this board offers a gasket mount build where the prolonged gaskets are not seated on the plate, it is stayed on both the top and bottom casing instead. That's enough, let's go through a sound test first. As I say, this is a gaming board and the light keystroke really adds a compliment to the overall typing experience. I can't really agree if it is a very well sound board, but for casual gaming and typing, this is definitely a great board to start with. Don't expect that advanced software like HEPCP can provide nowadays, but hey, the VIA is enough to change the lightings and key mappings. Overall, the build quality is actually very well, just that I think the quality of the keycaps and stabilizers could be better. Definitely the first thing I would change if I were you. So what do you think? Considering there are many well-built ELO boards starting at $99, like the ND75 and Rainy75, does the $120 price tag seem to be appealing? That's my question for you now. Any questions, feel free to leave it below and I will see you on the next one. Bye!